Greetings, young mathematicians. Welcome to Saxon Math, Lesson 101, Translating Expressions into Equations. Well, starting out with positive and negative. Look at all these negative signs. But it's really fairly simple, is we just need to count our negative signs. One, two, three, four. So we have an even number of negative signs, which will get us a positive result. So then we just say 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 2 is 16. Order of operations and exponents. Looking at these two, 5 times 6 is 30, and um, adding our exponents together, well, since we're multiplying them, would get us times 10 to the negative 11th power, but we want to do this as uh, some form of scientific notation. So we can just say 3 times 10 to the negative 10th power. And that will send our decimal point over by 1. Ratios. So we can break this one down quickly to 4 tenths times w equals 24 thousandths. And then we should divide each side by 4 tenths. But what can you do? We do the simplify this. So if we had 4 tenths, And 24 thousandths here, well, we can, we can multiply each one by 10. Which gives us something a little bit more wieldy. We can just uh, simplify this down to six hundredths. Measurement, convert negative 25 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. So multiply Celsius by 1.8 and add 32. Maybe that'll stick. Okay, so that'll get us, well, 450, but we have a decimal point there. That could be 45, and then we have a negative sign here, so it's negative 45, so we add 32. But since we're adding 32 to negative 45, we're really just subtracting these. But we're going to get a negative. So that will get us negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, well, these next two are pretty simple. Three-fourths of $80. Well, one-fourth of $80 is 20, so three-fourths of $80 is $60. And, well, looking at percent, 
25% less than 80, well, that is also $60, because we're still subtracting one-fourth of that. Probability, a spinner. Fine, I'll just keep this orange. A spinner has four equal sections with blue, red, orange, and purple. What is the probability the spinner will land on orange? Well, that's one fourth of the spinner, isn't it? So we could say it has a one in four chance. Okay, that's me a 15% tip. That's, that's about how much you should tip on a $29.78 bill. But since we're estimating, we're really just looking at this as 30. And so really we can just look at this as three times 15 times 10 for our mentally math. But since we are looking at this in terms of money, well, it's 450 pennies or $4.50. Okay, looking at today's lesson, translating expressions into equations. So really this is just saying that, you know, language is important for thinking about math. I wish we did more of this because it really helps conceptualize, helps to be able to explain things. Really, really good for everything. So when we're, when we're thinking of what do these symbols mean with what we are actually doing, we can say that if we're saying twice a number, then that's two times the number or two in. Five times more than, an, or excuse me, five more than a number is just that number plus five. Three less than a number is just that number minus three. different ways we can look at, at half of a number. We could say one half times the number, or we could just say divide that number by two, or number over two. So we're saying the product of a number and seven. So say if we said seven B equals 56, then that's a way of saying uh, the product of seven and eight is 56. Or say if we happen to say something like 17 is five more than twice a number. Now, one thing you might be noticing here is, well, um, if we actually say things out and write them the same way, well, we end up with something that looks a little bit backwards. So our first example is taking the way that we have phrased something and, and figuring out where we plug things in. So example one, if five less than twice a number is 17, 
then what is the number? Well, that looks familiar. All right, so if we're thinking five less than, five less than, okay. So we're gonna unpack this twice a number is 17, then what is the number? Okay, well, let's see. So twice a number We could just say two times the number, but it's five less than that. So let's plug that in here. Two in minus five is, here's a giveaway. That's your equal sign. 17. What is the number? What is the value of n? So what we have here, we, in setting things up, is the equation. And so if we're going to describe our steps, we could say 2x x hmm. to n excuse me i have diverged a bit from the book here and i'm going to say n instead of x just for just for continuity here so 2 n minus 5 plus 5 just to get things even up so 17 plus 5 so we can say i added five to both sides. That's true, isn't it? So then we'll end up with two in equals 22. And so we will call this our simplified equation. We simplified it. Now it's more simple. So now we'll do our next step. So we'll divide each side by two. We did it! So if we're describing the action, we can say we divided both sides by two. And so in doing so, we get in, the number is 11. And so our final answer has been Simplified. All right, so going over to example two. A taxi company charges $1.50 plus $3 per mile, metered tenths of a mile. Write an equation that relates the total fare which we will call F, in dollars to the number of miles, which we will call M, of a taxi ride. Then use the equation to find the fare for a six and four tenths mile taxi ride. All right, here. So, spoilers. Uh, to find the fare, the price of the ride, We're going to say F, here, actually, I'm going to make this big, 
f the fair equals three times the miles. We're talking about dollars here, but we're also in our equation, uh, just gonna represent them as regular numbers. So three dollars times the miles plus one and five tenths of a dollar. Okay, well, luckily we know what M is. So the first thing we're going to do is substitute. That's our special word here. We're going to substitute the actual number for the variable M. We say sub that's supposed to be me. Six and four tenths. So if we if we do this equation out, spoilers, we will end up with nineteen and two tenths. Or we could say uh, nineteen dollars and twenty cents plus one and five tenths, or one dollar and fifty cents. So what what we did here was we in that part uh, we multiplied We multiplied three and I should probably make another line for that, I guess. <laughs> multiplied three and six and four tenths, or multiplied three dollars and six dollars and forty cents. Okay, and then finally we would add the uh, $1.50, so the one and five tenths. And that will get us 20 and seven tenths. After we added 19 and two tenths and one and five tenths. So then, converting that to money, the fare for the ride is $20.70. Okay. And example three, the angles marked X and 2x are supplementary, which means the entire thing adds up to 180 degrees. So the question here is, what is the measure of the larger angle? Okay. So to set up an equation here, we could say two X plus X equals 180 degrees. And so solving this, well, we start out with this, which is the equation. And then we want to simplify that a little bit. And we can do that by combining like terms. Oh, 2x plus x is 3x equals 180 degrees. So what we have done there is simplify. But 
we're describing what we did. So we simplified it. So our next step is to divide both sides by three. So in speaking in the past tense, we, we divided both sides by three. And then finally, dividing that, we get 60 degrees for x. However, the, so uh, the solution to the equation is 60 degrees. However, that's not the answer to the question. The question was 2x. So we can just uh, take this one step further here and say, say that 2x equals 120. So our final step was we multiplied both sides by two. All right, so keeping all that in mind, when you do the practice set, remember that this is really only half about actually solving the equation, and the other half is about writing out in language what you did. Okay, so keep that in mind as we do the practice set that we will go over at 12.45. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you at 10.30.